joined by Tino Belli, IndyCar Aerodynamic Developments Director. Uh, thanks very much for taking the time to do this. Really appreciate it. Um, obviously, you know, there's a lot that goes into safety when it comes to, to IndyCar, in particular the windscreen. After the incident that we had seen on, on Sunday, you know, there are different aspects of this that are quite fascinating to, to learn about. And for our audience, I think they'd, they'd really like to know more about it. Uh, just starting a little bit with the screen itself and what it is actually made out of. Okay, so this, the screen is uh, polycarbonate. Uh, it's in two layers, so it's laminated like the uh, windscreen on a road car. Uh, we, do it, we make it laminated so that if something hits the windscreen, it can crack the, maybe the outside a little bit, but it won't travel all the way through to the inside of the screen because at that point you could have a structural fa uh, failure. But it's also uh, supported by a titanium uh, top frame. Uh, similar to the Formula One halo, except our titanium top frame, frame is um, 3D printed titanium. Uh, that takes most of the load. So like in uh, Stingray Rob's accident, when he landed on the top frame, that took the load uh, of the impact of him landing upside down. He was saying that, uh, I was talking to him earlier, but he was saying that you know, once he kind of went upside down and scraped along the pavement and he got out, he actually burnt his hand, he was saying, because he was saying, you no, know, the titanium could generate so much heat. But with everyone else who was involved in that incident, I mean, this this windscreen played a significant factor in, in keeping guys away from disaster. Uh, absolutely. Um, I think uh, that accident before the, the top frame and, and aero screen, he certainly would have had a minimum abrasions all over his helmet, and I believe there wasn't any... Uh, sign of contact either with the top frame or the asphalt um, and certainly in the case of uh, Kirkwood who you probably saw um, Ed landed on him and the, the wheel came right onto the top there um, I would have thought there would have been a significant neck injury at minimum in in that case uh, as you probably noticed the one thing that we do a little bit differently is we we keep this above the driver's head all the time just just for that wheel or something trying to get into the cockpit type of incident. We were talking earlier about uh, different uh, incidents like we had Felipe Massa's back in the day. Um, for this particular windscreen, obviously, it's not like the Halo. It's your own particular design. Why go with the windscreen and why not just do a Halo like Formula One does? So um, when we race on short ovals in particular and, and the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, uh, our cars are run very, very close together, very, very high speed. So 160 mile an hour plus at Iowa. So uh, when we do have an accident, although we try to retain as much onto the vehicle as we can with uh, tethers and the way we construct the bodywork, we can get flying objects. Um, and the worry with just the halo is a flying object coming in at halo height and deflecting down into the body of the driver. Uh, the body of the driver is completely unprotected and a, an object, say, weighing half a pound at 140 mile an hour, that's going to do a lot of damage. Looking at uh, just how hot it gets inside the cockpit now with drivers, you've actually added uh, some new cooling vents to the uh, windscreen itself. Um, how much do you think that actually like re really helps keep the driver cool? Uh, going into this, we knew that we were going to take a lot of air off the driver. We just didn't have a very good history. Uh, you know, Delara studied this car in computational fluid dynamics, and we do try to do uh, uh, analysis of, of driver cooling. But the last time we had like extremely hot drivers was probably back in the 1990s cars they didn't have CFD models of so uh, our objective was just to get as much airflow as possible so in the original one we put these ducts here we added some ducts in the nose and we uh, introduced some uh, pumped air into the helmet and then we this year we did the lightweight screen here and it gave us the opportunity to add a further duct here we realized that the drivers did not use this area for vision uh, and this up here is all carbon fiber now on the previous screen that was polycarbonate all the way up to the top frame and allowed us to pull these ducts to, to pump some air down. We have done tests. There is an improvement with these. 
Uh, is it a big enough improvement that we don't get the drivers hot on a very hot day? No. Um, but the drivers also use a cool suit. So when the temperatures get way high, they can introduce a cool suit with uh, water pipes and whatever, which is fed through the two holes in the nose there. And um, typically when the drivers use a cool suit, uh, that is sufficient. Um, they, they avoid it because it adds some weight in an area of the car that they don't want it to be. But uh, you can keep the drivers cool enough, just. So this is uh, the uh, Chip Ganassi Racing uh, car we're looking at right now at the moment. When we talk about a new car being developed for, for IndyCar uh, in the future, something like the, the windscreen here, is that something you're going to look at it really developing into the chassis itself? Correct. Um, this, was, this integration has been uh, pretty successful. So since we introduced this windscreen, we have not retired a tub because of damage, because usually this titanium frame is what gets damaged when we have an upside down incident. The titanium, as you say, got very, very hot. Normally that would have uh, damaged the cockpit rim, the carbon fiber of the cockpit rim. When we damage the cockpit rim, we will not repair the car. Like flat panels, we can repair, but when it gets into the openings of the, co of the car, we will not allow the, the monocoque to be repaired. Um, so it's been very successful, adds a little bit more weight than it would do if it was integrated right from the beginning. So yes, um, as we're studying the new car, we're looking for more ventilation and uh, a, a better, a better, lighter integration.